a piping hot tip of fresh out of the oven. Hey everybody, I'm Molly Ye, and I'm gonna show you how to make homemade sprinkles. You start with a big bowl of powdered sugar, and I'm adding a little cayenne pepper into mine because a combination of chocolate and cayenne pepper is delicious. The liquid that's gonna bring this all together is an egg white. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt just to bring out the flavor. I'm gonna add a little more food coloring to bump up that reddish pinkish color. I'm gonna stand up my piping bag in the cup and then I'll pour my mixture right in. And I'm just gonna pipe skinny little lines like this. And then you leave them to dry overnight, uncovered. And what you get are these really long skinny sprinkles like that. And you just break them up. And I'm gonna sprinkle these onto my brownies, just like that. Well, I hope you guys have fun making your own sprinkles. Happy sprinkling. If you're a renter, this is a great DIY to get amazing backsplash in your kitchen. I found these adhesive wall tiles by Tic Tac Tiles on Amazon for less than $30 a pack. Each pack comes with 10 sheets and each sheet is a 12 by 12. All you need for this project is a razor and X-Acto knife and TSP to clean the walls. This is what the tiles look like up close. You can see that they're a little bit more reflective than traditional backsplash, but they're also super easy to remove. All you need to do is hold a blow dryer or heat gun over them, wait for them to heat up, and then they peel right off. With the amount of space we wanted to cover, we used about four packs. So in total, this cost us around $120. I'm pretty sure that everyone has had this type of lamp before, maybe because it was in your college dorm, or maybe just because it's super inexpensive, but it comes in all sorts of colors and my parents have a lot of them. So today I'm gonna show you guys how to upgrade it on a budget. First, you just wanna take off the shade on the top. And then you're gonna wanna get some long three quarter inch dowels. You can get these at the craft store or Lowe's is where I got them. And then all you have to do is glue them on. So I twisted them and glued them on with some E6000, but you could use Gorilla Glue or whatever you have laying around. Just make sure to let it dry overnight. And then we spray painted it gold in the morning. And if you're not a fan of gold, you could choose any color spray paint that you want. And then you'll just need a lampshade in any style that you want. I recommend thrifting because it's a lot cheaper. You may need a harp depending on the shade that you get, but your lamp will go from drab to fab real fast. This cost me a little under $30, but most of the cost was the shade, so if you thrifted one or just use an Edison bulb instead, it would probably cost you around $15, and lamps like this are so expensive. Hi Drew, it's board certified dermatologist Dr. Dindy Engelman here today, and I want to clear up some of the myths about using oils on the skin. Some of the reasons that oils are great for the skin are that it con they contain essential fatty acids, which are kind of the building blocks of skin that our body doesn't produce naturally, so we really need them to help hydrate. So my first favorite oil is actually argan oil, and this is pure organic argan oil from Morocco, and contains tons of antioxidants that are really good for protecting the skin and healing it if you're oily or acne prone. Next, for those who have drier skin or more mature skin, olive oil is what I want you to reach for. Olives and olive oil are naturally packed with antioxidants, which prevents free radical damage that we get from sun and the environment like pollution. Those over time can degrade or break down collagen and elastin, making our skin look older and drier. And last is coconut oil. Look at this at room temperature, it's solid. So we don't wanna put it all over our face because it actually could lead to breakouts, but it's awesome for hair. Thanks so much, Drew. I hope that helps clear things up. Here's the detailed DIY of how I made my headboard. I upcycled my old headboard, but all you need is a giant piece of plywood cut to the size of your bed. For Queen, it is 60 inches by 30 inches. Then all you're gonna need is some foam. I bought a twin foam mattress and cut it to size. Then I got two yards of fabric and two yards of batting. Then you're gonna lay your fabric, batting, foam, and wood down like a little sandwich. Pull your batting and your fabric taut, and then you just start stapling. I would do the batting all the way around, followed by the fabric. Make sure your corners are crisp. And then you're happy, because you're literally done, that's it. And now you have your favorite piece of furniture. Hi Drew and hello everyone. My name is Rebecca and I'm the owner of Organize for Love. Today I'm going to be providing some hot tips for spring cleaning. Alright, so the first is you want to gather old bath towels, old sheets and rags and you can donate them to your animal shelter. A lot of people don't know is that animal shelters are always in use of those items. The second tip is you want to take old pots and pans. A lot of us really use the same two or three pots 
And so what you can do with old pots and pans, you can donate them to your local scrapyard. And most scrapyards will give you money for your old pots. I actually recently did this and I got a whopping $3, okay? And the last tip is you want to take your old suitcases and you want to donate them to your local foster care. Foster kids are typically forced to move from place to place with their items being in trash bags so this way they can move their things with dignity. Alright, so those are your three hot tips for spring cleaning and I hope these help you make your space feel more expansive, clutter free and peaceful. Hi Drew, this is Dr. Yael Hallis and my hot tip is actually facial yoga. By exercising our facial muscles, we can restore some of the facial volume which we lose as we age. Let's go through some of these simple exercises to look and namaste younger. So the first one actually is going to address the hollows that we all develop around the eyes. We're going to make a lopsided smile and we're gonna keep this lopsided smile the entire time. We're gonna take our finger and we're gonna put it right here on this hollow or we're gonna be correcting this mu muscle right here. We're gonna lean in so you can see. Now we're going to use this muscle right here to kind of close that eye. You see me doing that? That's the exercise. The other thing that we're gonna be doing is to smooth out what we call orange peel skin, which is what happens right here when we start getting dimpling of the chin. What we can do is we just pull our skin forward like the, we just fill that muscle, go forward like the, all right? Women who complied with this exercise regime of facial yoga daily for several months actually were able to take three years off of their facial appearance. I can't wait to try that.